Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this modular arithmetic for cryptography part 2 video, I'll be discussing greatest common divisor, Euclidean algorithm, Bezu's lemma and extended Euclidean algorithm. So let's get started. This whole topic is based on the GCD. So we start off with the GCD. The GCD is the highest number that divides evenly into two or more numbers. For the two non-zero integers a and b, the GCD a and b is the greatest positive integer which is a factor of both a and b. GCD is a very useful in modular arithmetic and cryptography to evaluate several conditions which we'll look at later. Let's look at an example. We need to find the GCD of two numbers 40 and 60. A simple method is to find the factors of both numbers 40 and 60 and select the common factors then select the GCD. So factors of 40 are and factors of 60 are. Now we need to select common factors of 40 and 60 which are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20. Finally, select the highest common factor that is 20 which is the GCD. This method is okay for small numbers but it is not an efficient way to find the GCD of large numbers. So we need to find an efficient method for GCD and that's where we use the Euclidean algorithm. Let's look at the Euclidean algorithm. It is a very efficient and the oldest algorithm to calculate the GCD of two arbitrarily large integers. It was described by the Greek mathematician Euclid. The Euclidean algorithm is basically a constant repetition of the division operation for integers until the remainder is zero. Note that we'll only get the remainder zero if both numbers share a common factor or divisor. Otherwise, we'll get one means they don't have any common factors or divisor. The Euclidean algorithm is also useful for reducing a common fraction to the lowest terms. For example, 1250 over 650 can also be written as 25 over 13 after dividing by their GCD value 50. So what is the Euclidean algorithm? It is dividend equals quotient times divisor plus remainder. If the two given non-zero numbers are a and b, where a is greater than or equal to b, then their GCD a comma b can be calculated using the Euclidean algorithm as a equals q times b plus r, where q is the quotient and r is the remainder. Here, we always consider a greater number as dividend and a smaller number as divisor. Let's look at an example to compute GCD of two numbers 256 and 72 using the Euclidean algorithm. Here, A equals 256 and B equals 72. We have just defined the criteria that dividend should be a greater number and divisor should be a smaller number. Now we need to find the value of Q and R in the Euclidean algorithm, which I have illustrated here using simple division operation of the greater number A by a smaller number B. And now we have got Q equals 3 and R equals 40 here. So we have got all four values in the algorithm. We'll arrange this in table format to better illustrate the complete computation of GCD. We already know the Euclidean algorithm is basically a constant repetition of the division operation for integers until remainder is zero. Therefore, we'll continue this division process with two changes at the next stage, the previous division operation where divisor becomes dividend and remainder becomes divisor. Do the next division operation. Do the next division operation. 
since the last remainder is zero and the GCD is the last non-zero remainder that appears just before the zero remainder. Therefore, GCD of 256 and 72 is 8. One more thing, as this whole computation is based on the mod, so we can also write this table just using mod relation and ignore quotient. Before we discuss the extended Euclidean algorithm, we need to understand an important concept, Bijou's lemma or Bijou's identity. So what is it? In simple language, it states that if A and B are non-zero integers and when they are multiplied by two integer coefficients S and T, we get GCD of A and B. So Bijou's lemma states S and T integer coefficients exist. We call them Bijou's coefficients and which can return the GCD of A and B when multiplied to A and B. But we don't know these coefficients and we need a method to find them. This is where we use the extended Euclidean algorithm which we are going to learn after this lemma. We can simplify this equation for co-prime numbers. If A and B are co-prime then Bijou's lemma is 1 equals s times a plus t times b. Let's look at an example. Find the Bijou's coefficients s and t if the known values are a equals 256, b equals 72 and gcd of a and b equals 8. We already know Bijou's lemma is gcd of a comma b equals s times a plus t times b. Place the values of a and b in it. Now we need to find s and t such that their multiplication with a and b will return gcd of a and b. But at this stage we don't know the extended Euclidean algorithm which is required to calculate s and t. So let's assume s equals to 2 and t equals to minus 7 which we will calculate later. Now multiply it and we have got the GCD value. Therefore, the values of Bijou's coefficients are correct as their multiplication with A and B return the GCD of A and B. Note that since GCD of these two numbers are A comma B, any other numbers is normally less than both a and b therefore one of s or t will usually be negative. We have just discussed Bijou's lemma and we know that the extended Euclidean algorithm can be used to find Bijou's coefficients s and t of two non-zero integers a and b in addition to the gcd of a and b. Note that there are several versions of the extended Euclidean algorithm However, they all calculate the value of GCD and Bijou's coefficients s and t. Here, the backward substitution based version of extended Euclidean algorithm is used and explained into two parts. In first part, standard Euclidean algorithm for computing GCD, which we have already done it. So, we only need to understand the part two. In part two, we use the backward substitution of equations with Bijou's lemma for computing Bijou's coefficients s and t, which we will look at it with an example. Let's look at an example. Find the GCD of a equals 256 and b equals 72. And also Bijou's coefficients s and t using the extended Euclidean algorithm with Bijou's lemma. We are using the same example for the continuity and simplicity. In part 1, we will find the GCD using the standard Euclidean algorithm. And in part 2, once we know the GCD, then we can find Bijou's coefficients s and t using the extended Euclidean algorithm with Bijou's lemma. Let's find these values and understand the complete algorithm. In the extended algorithm, we start off with the first part and find the GCD of A and B 
using the standard Euclidean algorithm, which we already know how to do it. But here, I'm going to write something more. What is it? Okay, check it in the first division step. We have rearranged the equation and written the remainder as the subject of this equation. We are going to use this equation for the backward substitution in the extended algorithm. Write next division step and we'll do the same rearrangement of equation in every division step. Now, we have got GCD equals 8 and this completes the first part so we can move on to the part 2. The part 2 is the extended algorithm in which we utilize all the rearranged equation for backward substitution. We start with the last GCD equation of the subject 8. I have rewritten the equation and multiplied 1 to make this equation in the form of Bijou's lemma for finding coefficients s and t. Our second subject is 32 in reverse order, so substitute the expression for 32 and just expand this expression. Keep this equation in the form of coefficients. We will continue this backward substitution process until the last subject which is 40 here and we expand this expression, we will get the equation with coefficients s and t of a and b. When doing this substitution, be careful about positive and negative operations. Finally, we can verify Bijou's lemma to check the product of coefficients s and t of a and b, whether it will return the GCD of a and b or not, and we are getting GCD here, that prove the Bijou's lemma. We are going to use this extended Euclidean algorithm to find the multiplicative inverse in RSA encryption algorithm letter. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.